Um, I wanted to pursue photography, but uh, I had been going to bartending school, and there was this cool bar across the street, St. Mark's Bar and Grill, which had typically been kind of an old man bar, kind of a just a, an old, old gin mill. And I went in there, and I used to hang out there, and I thought, it'd be cool to work here. So I went in one afternoon, and Larry, the owner, said, well, you know, you want to work here? Make a drink for the for the next person that comes in and orders a drink. And they ordered a pink squirrel, which was like the first and last time that anybody ever ordered a pink squirrel in that place. It was a it was a beer and shot joint, and I made a pink squirrel because I had just gone to bartending school, and he was very impressed and hired me on the spot. So, um, that's what I started doing, and uh, I would be kind of bartending at night and photographing. Uh, during the day. And that was my life for the next few years. I worked at other bars after, but St. Mark's Bar and Grill was kind of a happening bar. It was a lot of fun. We'd, uh, we'd have fights in there, like like old Western saloon like fights where people would like be grabbing bottles off the shelf and smashing overheads. It, was, it could get pretty hairy. We had some great kind of imposing bouncers, which uh, I always was really grateful for. Uh, I, um, you know, there were a number of knife fights. I had a gun pointed at me, you know, I remember that one, uh, you know, but it was exciting too. It sounds strange. My friend Paul was the manager and the owners were out of town and, and he came to me one day and he said, hey, Peter, you know, this guy came up to me, contacted me and he said, the Rolling Stones want to do a video here. So I said, yes. And I was like, cool. So he and I were the only people who knew the Stones were coming to do this video. It's the waiting on a friend video. And they, you know, you know, I had access to it. So I was able to take pictures outside while they were filming. And then we went inside and they started filming the interiors. And uh, so I took a position at the bar in the back. And um, Matthew was bartending. My friend Andrea was next to me. And we were just kind of, you know, sitting in the back and the director said, you know, we're going to do several takes and they had already done one take. Whatever you did in the first take, just keep doing it. I had taken a shot of uh, whatever. And so <laughs> every subsequent take I did a shot and I got really drunk and I got kind of stupid and I went up to Jagger and I asked him what he did for a living. He didn't find it very funny. <laughs> but we had a great time and then the stones jammed. And I was sitting two feet from them, like, while they're playing. It was kind of surreal. It didn't sound very good. I don't think they had played together for a while. But it was quite an experience. Uh, the, the, the unfortunate thing is, is all these people thought, oh, this is where the Rolling Stones hang out. They never hung out there. They just did a video there. They were never there before. They were there, never there after. All these weird rumors came up. People thought that was like, I think it was Peter Tosh hanging with them outside. It wasn't. It's was just a bunch of neighborhood guys. Anyway, the, the, the mythology around that kind of event kind of grew a little bit larger than, than it was. But all these kind of bridge and tunnel people started kind of coming in from the tri-state area, you know, looking for the stones. And it was like, no, they're not here tonight. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> kind of ruined the, the atmosphere. A lot of the locals started to kind of move away because it just got too silly. I moved on to other bars as well.